In the electric car space, Kia is certainly no stranger. The company has been dipping their toes in EVs since 2010. However, for 2022, they are going all in with an ambitious strategy called Plan S. In fact, this brand new 2022 Kia EV6 is the first of 11 models that will eventually come to market by the year 2026. Now, of course, for this new EV6, it's built off of a dedicated EV platform from the ground up. It's available with either rear or dual motor all-wheel drive, and it's one of the quickest charging EVs that you can buy currently, something that it shares of course, with its platform mate, the brand new Hyundai Ioniq 5. So today I'm out here just north of San Francisco in wine country to drive the brand new 2022 Kia EV6. And the big question I want answered, if you guys are looking for a mainstream EV that charges faster than most of the competitors and does well over 300 miles of range, how does the brand new EV6 stack up? Stay tuned to find out. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the design of the brand new EV6, because obviously as Kia designed this vehicle to be an EV from the ground up, they weren't held back, of course, by the needs for an internal combustion engine in terms of the look. Let me first, of course, start with the styling of the front fascia. This one here that I'm showing you is a GT line with the company's all-wheel drive system. So this has the dual motor all-wheel drive setup. It has the new corporate face of Kia, of course, with their digital tiger nose grill. It's technically an updated look to the grill. You have the new Kia corporate logo over here. The grill, again, as you can see, has no openings because it's just not needed. And then these headlights are certainly very interesting. You can see it has a unique shape to the LED daytime running light. There's a full LED turn signal, although it's not a sequential design. And then you have LED low and high beams, a little bit more of an interesting look here with the gloss black, but no actual fog lights. Let me know in the comments section below what you guys think of the design. The headlight is an interesting detail for me because it almost looks like it has like a plexiglass cover over here, but it actually goes in a little bit further. So it's an interesting look when you see it from up close. I think it definitely looks a little bit better in person. I especially like it in this runway red exterior color, which we'll talk about the gray one in the background in just a moment. Now, taking a look at the wheels for this model, this is the GT line with all wheel drive. And you can tell it's an all wheel drive model because it has these very distinctive 20 inch wheels. They're actually wrapped in pretty wide 255 with tires. Now, of course you can also get 20 inch wheels on some of the competitors, but the wheel, the tire size in this model is about 20 millimeters wider than most of the competitors, about 10 millimeters wider than something that you can get in like a Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now, of course, looking at it from the side profile here, this is where things get deceiving. Just like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 that this vehicle shares the eGMP platform with, it looks a lot smaller in pictures versus when you actually have it in person. Now, of course, I'm five foot seven, so you're probably noticing this just looks like a small hatchback, something like a Kia Niro. This is a significantly larger vehicle. The wheelbase is 114 inches long. That's similar to something that you find in something like the Kia Telluride. Its overall length is around 184 inches long. So that's actually about uh, two inches longer versus the Kia Forte, which is their compact sedan. This is classified as a compact vehicle, but on the inside, it's more like a mid-sized car. I really like the way the roof panel is kind of designed. You have this panoramic style sunroof. This actually opens. That's something you can't get in the Hyundai Ioniq 5, although you can see it's not a full panoramic glass roof. Uh, the roof line of this vehicle is actually about 60.8 inches tall. This is technically about two and a half inches lower versus something like the Mach-E versus something like the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Uh, and then you can see here the door handles. I also like how they're kind of a flush design where when the vehicle's locked, this will actually pop into place or it pops out to reveal the door handle if you guys want to actually access the car. Now, in terms of the charge port, it is located over here on the back of the vehicle. It's actually a power charge port. You can see this is where you can get the DC fast charging as standard. We'll talk about the charge times in a moment, but you can close it electronically. And then I wanna follow, show you guys this gray one over here. The gray one, this one is a rear wheel drive model. And because it's a rear wheel drive model, you do get smaller wheels. These are a 19 inch wheel wrapped in 235, 55 series tires. You can see it's a 20 millimeter narrow tire. So I definitely prefer the all wheel drive model for its bigger wheels. But if you guys prefer a little bit more sidewall, this is the one you're gonna wanna go for, which is the rear drive model. This matte color is about $700 extra. It's a nice looking color, but remember, you can't actually take something like this through a car wash. So if you guys don't have access to wash your vehicle at home, you may, want, you may not wanna choose this color. And then let's take a look, a bit, look at the rear design of this vehicle because it's probably the most controversial element. I mean, I actually really like the design of the Ionic 5. The EV6's design is, def is definitely growing on me. It has this very distinctive light bar here that goes across the entire length of the vehicle. There's a GT line badge over here. And you can see there's some more dark chrome that kind of reflects off of the uh, LED taillights here, which don't include like a, um, a sequential design, but I really like this kind of texturized look that very much mimics uh, the way the texture is on the taillight. And then of course, down here, you get some more of the darker chrome accents here. There's a, 
a nice little EV6 badge here that kind of mimics the texture you get on the new Kia logo. And then of course down here, no actual visible diffusers in my, uh, but you do have kind of the LED reverse light down there, which is nice. Kia does offer a tow package on this vehicle, a total maximum of 2,300 pounds, because technically it is a crossover. Now let's take a look at the cargo area of this vehicle because it is a CUV, so it's supposed to have a good amount of space. Now, this is where the Kia EV6 does lose some cargo space compared to the Ionic 5 and the um, other competitors like the Mustang Mach-E and a Tesla Model Y. Kia says you get around 24 cubic feet of space with the second row seats up. If you fold down those seats, it expands it to about 50 cubic feet. That's about 10 cubic feet less versus the Mach-E and about 20 cubic feet less versus the Tesla Model Y. So you are, you are compromised a little bit. You can kind of blame the sloping rear roof, which gives it a little bit more of a nicer design, of course, in the rear. And then if you open up the uh, floor here, you can see there is some nice storage underneath here. I believe this is a little bit more storage versus what you get in the Ionic 5 because you don't have uh, the subwoofer or something taking up the space back there. So clearly Kia made the exterior design of the EV6 very bold, but what about the inside? Before we get to that, let me first show you guys the key fob for the vehicle. You can see here's the key fob that Kia has been using for a few years now. It's kind of resembles like a detonator. It looks pretty much the same with the usual lock, unlock, panic button. You can also open the power lift gate, but there are a couple of extra buttons here because this car does have their uh, advanced smart parking feature, which is technically what Hyundai calls it. If you want to use that, you basically just push the lock button here, push and hold this button here, where you can hear the vehicle turns on everything. And remember, this is an electric car. And then you push and hold this button here where you can make the car move forward and backwards. This is really handy if you guys are trying to park this vehicle in between a tight spot or if somebody parked poorly um, next to you when you came back outside where your vehicle is parked. So again, I can also push this button here to also back it up. This, I believe, is the first Kia to actually have this feature, so it's nice to see it here on this GT line model here. When, you wanna, when you're want to, when you ready to turn off the vehicle, just push and hold that button again. You can hear it turned on the parking brake. Now, as I approach the vehicle, you can see uh, now the vehicle is locked, but the door handles are nicely retract. Um, if I want, I can unlock the door using the actual key fob, or I should just be able to touch it right there, and you can he see that actually opens up the door. That pops out the door handle for you. It actually has a traditional keyhole behind the door handle and the mirrors also electrically fold out. Now, looking at the interior of my particular tester, it's a great color combination, of course, with the runway red, this kind of two-tone look with the suede Alcantara. This is, again, a vegan leather with the contrasting stitching and the uh, white insert in there. You can see the steering wheel also has that nice flat bottom design. It's a two-spoke wheel the new Kia logo, whatnot. The door panels you can see also are pretty nice looking. There's actually a soft touch injection molded plastic here, some metal trim, piano black plastic. You can see it's more padded over here, that contrasting white color. And then the 14 speaker Meridian sound system, you can see this has a metal speaker grill, really makes a great first impression along with those twin 12 inch displays. Now getting inside here, and stepping in, this is where I'm definitely noticing the EV6 feels more like a car. I mean, six inches of ground clearance is not much to really give you the feeling that you're in an SUV. So kind of keep that in mind if you guys are looking for that crossover ride height. This just doesn't give that to you. Uh, when I shut the door, you can hear the door sounds nice and solid. It's pretty similar to the last Hyundai Ionic 5 that I tested, uh, and it just gives you a great first impression of quality. Now, if you want to turn the vehicle on, Kia puts the button right here on this little floating center console right by the shifter. Once I uh, turn that on, you can hear everything kind of just whirs to life. There's a new chime and then the two 12 inch displays come on. You can see this is now called Kia Connect. It doesn't have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it does have wired connection. But you can see you've got a 12.3 inch display and another 12.3 inch display here. They kind of uh, merge together, although it, there's still an empty space here to give you essentially 24 inches of curved screen, which definitely looks nice. I actually like the way this looks more than the Ionic 5 because the Hyundai's isn't curved and they also kind of have like a lighter color as opposed to this darker color. You can see this is kind of filled with sustainable recycled materials. This is a really interesting texture here with the different color contrast. This feels really high quality actually. Over here, it's all hard touch plastic. The entire dash is essentially hard touch plastic, but that's okay because um, at least the touch points here are soft touch, which is nice. I like also the metal trim that you get here, this floating center console, which is nice. This is the shifter here that controls the one speed reduction gear transmission. If I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see full 360 camera with a top down view. And I can also touch this right here. Uh, and you can see it actually will show you 
the car and you can kind of scroll around the vehicle in a full panoramic 360 scan. I kind of wish the car matched the color of the actual car. It would have been red, would have been nice, but this is pretty high-end stuff. This is typically what I find on a lot of the German vehicles. So it's great to find it on a Kia over here. Uh, although this is a very, very premium car. Now, um, I want you also to notice a couple of things. You can see this little cool little detail right here. There's beautiful ambient lighting in this car. I think Kia offers like 64 different colors. If I go here into the setup and I go to this vehicle right here, or probably not vehicle actually. I haven't actually done this yet. Go to general maybe. It doesn't give me that. You can change the color of this um, screen right here or of the interior lighting. You can actually change the split screen over here. There's, I haven't had much time to play with this car, but I know that you can do this uh, where you can change that little display. Let's go to display here and see if I can do that. Illumination, auto adjust. Um, this is a really nice, easy to use system and it now includes over there updates. Um, wirelessly, and that includes things for like your GPS. It also has built-in Wi-Fi hotspot, which is definitely also nice. So again, this is updated versus the UVO system. They now call it Kia Connect, so that's something to keep in mind. The other thing, oh, here we go. So go over here to lights, go over here to ambient light, um, and then you can go over here to color. So I want you to notice the, the color of right now. It's called Refreshing C. If I go here and I change the color to like this orange, that actually changes that to red as well. And it goes along the entire length of the dashboard. And you can see it's also in the door panels. This is gonna look really good at night. Sadly, I don't have this car to show you guys the evening. You can see there's the purple look. It looks amazing. So I'm looking forward to getting this car uh, in my driveway for a week so I can actually test, on, test out everything. And the other cool thing you can do when you're in this cluster or you're in this um, settings here, you can change, go to your active sound design here. And this car actually offers several different driving sounds. There's like a dynamic, a cyber, a custom sound and a stylish sound. We'll talk about what those sound like during the driving scene, but again, all really neat stuff. Uh, and I like how Kia gives you that kind of customization. This is what the CarPlay looks like. You can also make this do a split screen if you'd like. This is the entire screen. It's snappy, it's quick, it's easy to use. It's really, really impressive looking. Uh, and it definitely goes head to head with things like the, what the Mach-E gives you with its 15 inch display, uh, 15 and a half inch display. And of course the Tesla with its 15 inch display. The steering wheel is obviously tilt and telescoping. You can see offers a good amount of adjustability. I love the new Kia logo. I like how it has these paddles on the wheel for the regen braking. We'll talk about that later. And then if you push this button here, you can see there are four different drive modes. There's an eco, normal, and a sport. And then if you push and hold the drive mode button, it goes into a snow setting. You can see it actually changes what that looks like, which is pretty nice. Uh, we'll talk about that, of course, when we go into the driving scene. Uh, you have a wireless phone charging pad here. You have your uh, parking sensors and auto hold feature. This, again, will access the active park assist for this vehicle well it'll try to find a parking spot for you there's a massive uh, storage area over here where it's a huge deep bin this is way better executed versus what you get in the id4 where it literally just gives you kind of just emptiness there or like carpeted material and there's no actual padding or anything um, that kind of texturized look is carried over on the armrest here open this up you can see it's pretty deep um, no actual power outlets in there you have a usb two usb ports over there a usb c and a usb a so that's all very nice. You have full LED lighting in the cabin, which is also great. And then these seats you can see are really, really attractive looking. I love um, the fact that they have this kind of contrast. They're comfortable and supportive. You have this suede Alcantara. The headrests certainly look weird, but they are adjustable at least. They don't come forward and back, but they do go up and down, which is definitely a nice touch. And then over here on the glove box, you can see it's a pretty big size. It's damped. Uh, the lid's not lined with felt, however. So um, over here, you can also see, get this to close. There are nice touches here like heated and ventilated seats. You can see there's the ventilated seats. It's a touch sensitive button. There's also a heated wheel. The ventilated seats actually come standard on all the trims except for the light, uh, which again, most competitors don't offer ventilated seats. If you want a heated steering wheel, you have to go for the all wheel drive uh, model, uh, which is you know nice that they kind of pair the two together. You also get the heat pump, which is something that uh, a lot of people are gonna want for better range in cold weather. And the 14 speaker Meridian sound system in this car sounds pretty good. It's pretty much on par with the Bang & Olufsen system and the Tesla system that I've tested. Over here, you can see there's the augmented reality uh, heads up display, which looks really cool. And overall, the cabin of this, I definitely think I prefer this interior over the Ionic 5, just because I like what Kia has done here. They make it feel a little bit sportier. Everything kind of wraps around the driver. The tech in here is just fantastic. And it's really not missing anything that I think it needs. I mean, it has almost everything that I could want, especially in a modern all electric vehicle. Hopping into the back seat of the EV6 because 
This vehicle has a very long wheelbase. You get a pretty good amount of space back here, way more versus what you'll find in a compact vehicle. Kia says you get around 39 inches of legroom back here, which is comparable to the Mustang Mach-E and the ID4, but something like the Tesla Model Y will offer a little bit more space. I like how the floor is completely flat back here, so if you need to fit three people, people across, you can do so. And you can see there are two USB-C charging ports. Kia and Hyundai like to put it right here cleverly on the side of the front seats. You have two storage pockets over here, which is nice. And these seat backs are definitely an interesting design. You can see this is all complete hard plastic material, but it's kind of nicely sculpted where it doesn't interfere with my knee space, which is definitely nice. In terms of the materials back here, it's all hard touch plastic back here on the door panels. Um, you have more piano black plastic trim. You do have two level heated seats, which you do get on the all wheel drive model. Remember the all wheel drive version gives you the heated back seats, the heated steering wheel and the heat pump. That's a critical element that helps to extend the range in cold climates. If you fold this down, you also get an armrest here uh, with two cup holders. It actually, it has this clever feature here where you can slide this back and it gives you a little bit more storage over there. I've never seen that before, which is definitely a nice touch. Uh, above me, you can see there's LED lighting, but unlike the Ionic 5, which had a very large panoramic glass roof, there is no uh, glass roof option here. Instead, you just have a standard size sunroof, but at least the sunroof opens. That's something that the EV6 offers that its platform mate, the Hyundai, does not. And if you guys also like on long trips to have the rear seats recline, there's a little lever here, which allows you to re recline the seat a little bit. This seat does not move forward and back, but it does add a little bit extra comfort for those of you who plan to sit in the back on longer trips. Now, of course, the million dollar question with any EV is what's going on underneath the hood because most buyers are expecting a frunk here and this is where the Kia EV6 does deliver. It shares the same somewhat small frunk that you get in the Hyundai Ioniq 5. In fact, I don't even have a measurable number here, but at least Kia does give you a frunk. It's probably just large enough to put the mobile charger that this car comes with, the 110 volt charger. Uh, of course, if you guys are looking for a larger frunk, you're gonna find that in something like the Tesla Model Y and the Ford Mustang Mach-E. The Mach-E specifically has a much longer hood because it's supposed to be a Mustang. Now, of course, since we're underneath here, let's talk a little about the batteries and the motor capacity. This one here is the long range dual motor version, which means it has a motor in the front and a motor in the back. Uh, the motor in the front technically makes a little bit less power, 74 kilowatt hours versus 160 in the rear motor. You get a grand total of 320 horsepower and 446 pound-feet of torque. Those numbers are putting it right in line with something like the dual motor Tesla Model Y and the Mach-E Premium with the extended range battery and all-wheel drive. This model here will do zero to 60 in about 4.6 seconds. So pretty impressive numbers. Keep in mind, the EV6 is available in two different battery sizes, either 58 kilowatt hours for the base version or 77.4, which comes standard on all the all wheel drive versions. The range is also something we have to talk about. The smaller battery will do about 232 miles on a full charge. The most range you're gonna get is in the rear drive long range, which will do 310 miles. This one here with all wheel drive will do about 274 miles of range. So that range is a little bit better versus what you get in the Ionic 5, but but around the same as what you get in the Mustang Mach-E. So very competitive range, and it's coming, of course, from a smaller battery pack. You have a one-speed reduction gear transmission, uh, and this vehicle will still tow a maximum of around 2,300 pounds if you guys uh, add the tow package. It weighs in at around 4,600 pounds, so it's a little bit lighter than some of its competitors because it is a slightly smaller car. Now, of course, follow me over this way. I wanna show you guys the charge port again because let's talk about the charging. This is always a big, important factor for EVs, and this car is built off of the 800-volt architecture, which means it can charge at up to 350 kilowatt hours. That's much faster versus what you find in the uh, some of its competitors. You can see the charge port is power, which is nice. Uh, and you can see it comes standard with DC fast charging. There's the J1772 plug. And here's the DC fast charging CCS combo if you guys wanna do that. If you guys can find a 350 kilowatt hour charger at an Electrify America station, this will basically charge 70 miles in about five minutes. Kia says you can go from five to 80% in just 18 minutes. And this vehicle doesn't fall off a cliff when you go past 80% like most of the competitors. This, For reference, this charges faster than a Tesla Model Y, uh, Mustang Mach-E. It also charges faster than Porsche Taycan, which is again, a much more expensive vehicle. Um, the DC fast charging, of course, uh, is going to be uh, dependent on whether you can find that 350 kilowatt hour charger. Most most are gonna have 150 kilowatts. And when you guys buy this vehicle, Kia will include a thousand kilowatts of free charging. Uh, so it's not quite as good as what you're gonna get with the Ionic 5, which is about two years of free charging at any Electrify America station. Now, one thing I wanna also talk about is the vehicle to load feature. This is a feature that again, you can also get on the Ionic 5. All of them essentially will come with this little contraption right here that plugs into the J1772 plug. Now, when you have this plugged in, you can essentially pull this little 
area down. You can see it reveals just a standard household power outlet and you can turn the button here on and off. Now you can essentially use this to power things like external electrical things. Like if you guys are going camping, you can, you can plug in like an electric stove or whatnot. This will actually give about 1900 watts of total power, which is pretty good. Keep in mind something like, you know, the new Tundra offers only 400 watts from its power inverter. So this is a pretty nifty feature. You can also uh, slowly charge another electric vehicle. It's, it's gonna be a really slow trickle, char trickle charge, but I guess beggars can't be choosers. This is a cool feature that Hyundai and Kia offers. And I think a lot of other EV manufacturers should consider offering a feature like this. All right, so here we are in the brand new 2022 Kia EV6. This is the model, one of the models that I've been waiting to drive all year. I already had a chance to drive the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which was a fantastic vehicle. Uh, that one has consistently been on my mind because it's just a very impressive platform. It quick charges really quickly, excellent handling, tons of power. I mean, this is just the GT Line model. I'm gonna spend most of my time driving the GT Line. We will get into the regular GT Line with just rear wheel drive as opposed to the all wheel drive model. Um, just because I want to see what I can do 0 to 60 in that model. I actually haven't had a chance to drive that. Hyundai did not have that spec available for us to drive uh, when I drove that car last month. But just getting in here and putting my foot down. <laughs> that is plenty of punchy performance. <laughs> it also makes a really interesting noise, too. I really like the sound that this car makes when you're uh, just on the throttle. It's a really cool noise. But you know what? I have my 0 to 60 timing equipment here. So I do want to test out what this vehicle can do because Kia says 4.6 seconds. Let's see if that's true. Oh, it's fast off the line. Oh, 4.54 seconds. That is pretty impressive actually. Uh, and it's slightly quicker than Kia's claim. So I am definitely impressed with what this car can do, but you know what? Let's try it one more time. And I'm just gonna literally floor it. There's no launch control. Oh God, it just like leaps off the line. 4.46 <laughs> seconds, wow. Very, very impressive. I was not expecting that kind of performance out of this car. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Kia should be pretty impressed. They should be very, very proud of this vehicle. It has a ton of power. Anyways, let's hop into the rear drive model because I want to see what the rear drive model can do uh, in that same run. So we got 4.4 seconds in the all wheel drive version. And now I've switched over to this rear drive model, which again has the bigger battery pack. We have basically 100 less horsepower in the rear drive model. And I actually don't know the zero to 60 number in this car versus the all wheel drive. Kia only quoted the all wheel drive model. So let's go ahead and see what this can do. It's got a full charge also. way slower off the line. Holy crap, this is a lot slower. 6.49 seconds, so about two seconds slower, zero to 60, which isn't bad. But uh, yeah, you are definitely giving up a fair amount of performance uh, by going with uh, the rear drive model. Seven point zero five on this backward run. So average the two out, you're looking at around six point seven seconds. Still good, but it doesn't have that off the line immediacy that you get from the all wheel drive version. So now that we've knocked out the zero to 60 testing out of the way, let's talk a little bit more about how the Kia EV6 drives out on the road. Now, of course, I have had a little bit of time in the Ionic 5. So now that we're on this back road here with the new EV6, I wanna talk about the differences because remember this rides on the e, the eGMP platform that it shares with the Ionic 5, which is an excellent place to start. You've got the batteries mounted low on the floor, which lowers the center of gravity. This model here definitely feels like it's been tuned for a sportier edge. As I go around these curves here, I'm in the sportiest model that's available for now. We've got 20 inch wheels. We've got um, you know dual motors in the front and rear giving us 320 horsepower. This feels much sportier than the Ionic 5 where Hyundai kind of tuned the Ionic to be a little bit softer. This is tuned for a little bit uh, more of a firmer ride. You have more talkative steering. The steering in this car is actually really quick and it really hides the 4,600 pounds of fat that this car pushes around. I mean, it definitely feels lighter uh, versus the Mustang Mach-E 
Uh, it feels also a little bit lighter than a Tesla Model Y because it sits lower. Now, Kia calls this thing a crossover, but it's very much a hot hatch to me. I mean, it sits up, you know, you could see out of it very nicely, although this pillar here is a little bit chunky, but I don't get the sense that I'm sitting up that high off the ground. So if you're looking for that crossover ride height, you're just not gonna find it in this car. That's something to, to keep in mind. Now, uh, one thing I, I wanna talk about is the regen braking. Kia offers four, four different levels of regen braking. Um, you can control them via this pedal right here. They actually told us that most people actually prefer, in Europe, prefer coasting. They don't like any regen braking at all. In America, that's kind of reversed. Americans actually like regen, and you can eventually set it at zero, pull this pedal here, it goes to one, two, three, and then pull it again, it goes into an eye pedal or a max regen. This, when I lift off the throttle, you can see really gives you maximum regen. It reminds me a lot of what I you know, test out in um, the Mach-E, the, Tesla, the Teslas, the Polestar. This is way better versus the Volkswagen ID4, which offers very little to no regen. So it's nice that Kia offers you uh, a choice where you can customize it. Another thing you're probably also noticing is the noise. When I have this vehicle in any of the drive modes, really, if I put my foot down, it has this like active sound, which is obviously a fake sound. If you want, you can go into the screen here. You can put it into a moderate volume, a small, and you can turn it off entirely. When you turn it off entirely, you can hear it gives you the full on EV experience with no noise. But the cool thing about it, and I don't think the Ionic 5 offered that, is the advanced setting here where I can actually change the sound, the sound in general. They offer four different uh, types of sound. That was dynamic that you heard earlier. Let's go ahead and put it back on so you can hear it again. Cool sound for sure, but let's try the stylish sound. Definitely a little bit louder there. Interesting noise. There's also a cyber sound. <laughs> this definitely sounds a little more George Jetson-y future. Oh, that's an interesting sound. The car is still bloody fast. That's the one thing. Uh, this car, with its 446 pound-feet of torque, every time you just stab the throttle, it feels, it gives you all that torque instantly. So 4.5 seconds for this model here is plenty fast. I mean, there's basically no need for most people to go to the GT version, but on the highway, I did notice that this car does run out of steam on the highway, but it actually feels faster than a Mach-E GT Performance. That's the car that, of course, I have in my long-term garage uh, that my partner and I purchased. That's the thing about the Ford is it kind of gives you that five second rule where they're limiting the power after five seconds. Kia doesn't do that. They essentially give you all the power all at once, which is nice, but it gets me super excited, of course, to drive the full on GT model because of that extra 240 horsepower. Um, but let me know in the comments section below what sound you guys prefer. I think I actually might prefer the, dy the dynamic sound, but if, of course you can turn it off entirely if you don't like the sound. And of course, in typical Hyundai Kia fashion, there's a plethora of tech in this car. The, one of my favorite features is that whenever I signal left or right, it shows you in your blind view camera here what, what's actually in your blind spot, which is really nice. That is gonna be standard on the wind trims and up. I believe only the light trim doesn't give that to you. Uh, and these seats are a little bit more aggressively bolstered. I like how they hold me in place nicely. Um, they're also really comfortable and supportive. Remember, this interior is full of vegan materials. It's got the sustainable materials, so a lot of recycled plastics. It feels really high tech in here. I also like the augmented reality heads up display. This will actually um, cast a projection onto the windshield where it actually will overlay uh, arrows and such whenever you have the GPS up uploaded. It's or active, it really, uh, is impressive tech. That's something you can't even get in the Mustang Mach-E. I also love the fact that I've got cooled seats in this car, uh, heated seats, heated steering wheel, a ton of tech features, this typical Hyundai and Kia fashion. And I also wanna point out, I'm gonna do some more range testing when I actually have one for a week to test, but when I got into this vehicle, it started out with around 293 miles of, of range on a full charge. That's of course when I turned off the climate control and I had it in eco mode. If you start cycling through the modes and you turn on the the AC or the heater, it will drop the range. Uh, when I had it in its full like sport plus or sport mode with the climate control on, it was showing about 272 miles. So right bang on with the EPA's targets. Remember Hyundai and Kia or Kia said that this model got, or the rear drive model got 339 miles in their independent testing on a full charge. So I'll be looking forward to seeing what I can actually do in the real world. Um, the driver assistance tech in this car, also I had a chance to use it on the highway, works fairly well. The highway driving assist uh, 2.0 essentially will do level two autonomy 
um, where you can do hands-free, but it uses a wheel torque sensor in there, so it won't let you drive hands-free because you have to keep your hands on the wheel. It'll actually yell at you when it when you it senses your hands aren't on the wheel. But it does have auto lane changes, which is something new that they added, I believe, um, for this car. I think it's the first Kia to have it. Really puts it up there with all of the high-end brands in terms of driver assistance tech, so that's always very impressive. The view out of the back actually is also pretty good considering the odd shape of the vehicle. The view out of the sides and the front is also good, although this A-pillar here is a little bit on the chunkier side. But overall, I'm finding very little reasons to, or very little faults with this vehicle. It, it, it handles nicely, it has good ride quality, it has very impressive range from what the computer was showing me, and you can also fast charge this vehicle insanely quick. It's like not that much slower than just filling up your car with gas and then using the bathroom or something like that. Uh, and you also have a good amount of space in here, but just keep in mind, if you're looking for that crossover SUV ride height, this is not gonna give that to you, just like the Ionic 5. And if you're also taller, you may also be a little bit limited on the headroom. So just make sure you try this vehicle out before actually deciding if you wanna purchase it. So after spending the day driving the brand new 2022 Kia EV6, just like the Hyundai Ioniq 5, this vehicle continues to impress me. It's built, of course, off of a dedicated all-electric platform, which is very impressive. The all-wheel drive and the rear drive model offer plenty of performance. This model here has around 225 horsepower. And unlike the Ioniq 5, this definitely has a sportier feel. I'd say this is one of the sportier options out there. It actually feels even sportier versus the Mustang Mach-E, which it itself feels a little bit more like an SUV. It feels a little bit more top-heavy and a lot heavier. Uh, this digital this matte gray paint certainly looks good with the body of this car and uh, the 19 inch wheels on this model does give it a slightly softer ride versus the 20s obviously uh, but Kia has again tuned this car to be a little bit more uh, sportier now of course this red one over here the all-wheel drive version is probably the one that I'm going to prefer now at least until the full-on GT version comes out it offers almost 100 more horsepower 0 to 60 in the mid four second range and you still get 274 miles of range I'm going to estimate in the real world this should do better when I started out my drive this vehicle was showing around 200 92 miles on a full charge, which is pretty impressive to get over almost 300 miles. In terms of pricing, the Kia EV6 is heading to local dealerships next month, and Kia already announced pricing. This is going to start at $40,900 for the base light with the 58 kilowatt hour battery pack and 232 miles of range. That's before the $7,500 federal tax credit. If you guys want all wheel drive uh, and the bigger battery, you're going to have to spend about $10,000 more. If you just want the bigger battery, it's going to cost you about $7,000 more, so around $47,000. So forty dollars basically for the longer range uh, when you add in the federal tax credit. Of course, that model there is the GT line, which is a little bit extra. Uh, with the extra color for the paint charge, it's about $54,000 uh, or $53,400. This all wheel drive model is three grand more. It's about $57,440. That of course is gonna give you almost an extra 100 horsepower, but you also get 20 inch wheels. You get the heated steering wheel, you get the heated back seats and the heat pump, which is gonna be crucial if you guys live in the cold weather state. So personally for me, I would go for this model at least until the full on GT model comes out. But overall, this is probably one of my favorite new mainstream EVs out there, it and the Ionic 5. Really, they're both good. It's gonna come down to your personal style and your personal taste. I actually prefer the styling more of the Ionic 5, but I love the fact that Kia has made this sportier and they're gonna offer an even faster version with over 200 additional horsepower. With all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Kia EV6. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.